Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. Well, this is going to be for trading on Friday, November the 22nd. Taking a look at Thursday's trading activity in the E-mini S&P 500 futures contract, you see that this is the, uh, the gift that keeps on giving. Every pullback is being bought just like on November the 7th. We pull back only to roar to new highs. We got warning candles. We hit a we hit a low on Thursday. I'm sorry, on Wednesday, only to roar back on Thursday. All right. So we look for a possible continuation pattern on Friday, meaning that the market is going to try to hit these new highs and close above 1800. That's what this market wants to do. It's, it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, the momentum here is quite powerful, showing little to no pullback in sight. As far as our um, our swing VIX, we are still in a um, in a um, a negative um, trend channel here. We have a negative swing VIX with the down trend channel. But we're not really producing anything with it. So what that leads me to believe is that we still have more upside to go in this particular market. Now, mind you, we hit an overbought swing VIX on the 15th of November. All right. We did hit a, an overbought swing VIX. But the issue is um, when we got that warning of a possible turn the following day on the 18th, we really didn't get any follow through on that per se. All right, we're still overbought in this market, but it's showing that even with an overbought scenario, we still have the more upside to go because of the locked in bullishness. Now, a thing of interest happened on. Thursday, we have a possibility that, and it's just a slight one, that the market wants to um, to come off from this locked-in bullish phase. Now, I say possible, meaning that we could um, pick up momentum on Friday, so it's just possible. But as you can see here, we have the possibility showing that there are signs that this this new breakout may be sold shortly. We'll have to wait and see. <clears throat> Pretty much all attempts to short this market have been met with disaster or very little minimum uh, downside, which will make most people just shy away from it altogether and say, well, there's no money here. It's not worth it. And that's what the market does. It, it, it lures you into a state of complacency, thinking that the bull will never end and then it roars to new highs that's how it gets you that's how it gets most people so you just have to be mindful of that and know going into it that that's where you stand that's what's going down right now okay so just keep that in mind you can't be lured into a state of complacency you have to be prepared um, from when the thing comes off and even though we don't like it and we get tossed around sometimes when the, when the markets uh, start to consolidate and get indecisive you still have to trade the way you trade notice here that even though we're hitting higher highs it's very small volume all right very tight trading ranges all right not a lot of volatility until you get to here on October the 30th. Then we consolidate sideways, but we, we take out prior day lows. All right, just weird price action at these all time high levels. It really is. It's just almost to the point where it literally makes no sense. Not making a whole lot of sense very tiny bars it's not like it's really a runaway bull market it's just ebbing and flowing 
very tight trading ranges on most days. Then all of a sudden you get a bar like this on November the 7th. Blow. You think, okay, the top's in, which it is, temporarily. Then you get the next day, you erase all of that after you put in another little low. Only a few points lower than the prior day's low. Then you get this monster reversal. Then you go to new highs. So it's like it says, psych, psyched you out here, and then rallied again. It wants to keep getting people to buy these so-called corrections. We're thinking that it's always going to just correct and go to new highs. Like here, it didn't. It fooled you. Went up, went up, and then just took took all that out. And then it's just been kind of psychotic in a way. Let's go back further and take a look. All right, here, again, you were consolidated for a while here. Okay? About two weeks of trading. Then you break out, okay? You break out of that con that congestion pattern. All right, then you get a warning. Nothing happens from the warning. You break out the new highs. Now you start pulse waving here. On the 18th of September, you pulse wave. It only lasts a day. And then after that, you collapse immediately back down again. Bringing fear now to those who were long, causing the bears to pile on, say, okay, that's it, market is negative pulse waving, uh, pulse waving, we lock in that negativity right here, <coughs> excuse me, see where it's locked in, and now here we go, market just falls out of bed, recovers the following day, alright, collapses down again, just, just psychotic, Okay, falls out of bed, really no rhyme or reason, right, just blow, okay, and then look what happens, really starts to make you think, oh, it's going to negative pulse wave now, here we go, we're negative pulse waving, psych, rallies right back up again. And then we go to really new highs, taking out the previous highs. Here you are. Psychotic market. Doesn't know what it wants to do. Okay? Very difficult to flip the, flip the coin and call it in the air when it acts like this. It becomes very difficult. You really don't know what to make of it. And that's, I think, the whole point of not knowing not knowing what to do with it, not knowing what to make of it, not knowing if we're going to continue or if it's just going to break down. No one wants to miss the breakout to new, to new highs, but then again, no one wants to miss the corrective top either. So it becomes a what do you do type of a scenario. And that's what makes these kind of markets difficult because people are reluctant to buy at new highs. But who's to say when the market is going to stop? Who's to say where it's going to stop? And so you get to a point where it's a, and nobody knows. Nobody knows where it's going to stop. We just know that eventually it will stop. But again, where it stops, anyone's guess, you know, is as good as the other. You just really have no way of knowing what's what. All right, so for Friday's trading, uh, the S&P 500 E-mini, long at 17.96 half, short at 17.85 and three quarters. If we come off, obviously, we have a lot of downside that we can correct and still remain bullish and have a wide trading range of consolidation from this uh, 17.80 to 16.80 price range, so 100 points of just fluff that we could just oscillate in between which is a wide swing and still go nowhere <laughs> amazing now let's take a look at the Russell very interesting chart here okay look at this alright the Russell's all over the place locking in bullishness coming off locking in bearishness coming off trying to lock in bearishness again 
coming off, trying to lock in bullishness, coming off, bearishness, coming off. It doesn't know what it wants to do. Technically speaking, the Russell is completely consolidated at this point. All right? Topped out temporarily. Okay? Once again, the Russell is showing that it is exhausted and topped out at these levels and doesn't know what it wants to do doesn't know where it wants to go it's just existing in the moment that's all I can say right now for the Russell is that it is it is existing in the moment it doesn't know where it's going from here it doesn't know what it wants to do from here it's just here it just exists so we're gonna have to watch this one and see where we go from here as well um, I think we just oscillate and the market just goes up and down and whatever. Wide, look at this wide range on Thursday. Incredible. Okay. So for Friday's trading with the Russell, uh, call it what it is. Uh, 11, 20, 40 on the top side to go long. And 11, 7, 90 on the downside to go short. All right, here's that crude oil future I was telling you about for the last couple of days. How the market's been trying to base out of this and trying to get into a corrective mode. Well, we just hit it. All right, we just came off of the locked in downtrend and we're trying to start the beginning of a bullish uptrend. So this one's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, again, if we, we if we continue like this and pick up momentum, we could get back above $100 a barrel easily within a couple of days trading. But I say be careful because we're technically still in a bear market, so anything goes. Don't forget, <clears throat> excuse me, the last time we tried to break out was on November the 11th. We had a locked in bullishness right here for a day, and then we came off the next day immediately and started to hit new lows. So it's not over until it's over. Nice breakout, though. Should be able to play the continuation pattern for Friday easily. Uh, so for Friday's trading, I'm going to say uh, long at 95.73, short at 94.55. Um, I don't think the 94.55 is going to trigger intraday. I think that we're going to just, you know, boogie on up from here. But you never can be too too careful with this crude oil. So that's how I play it. All right, looking at gold again, the precious metals. I did I have been warning about this for a while. We're now officially negative pulse waving. We took out the prior day's low. We're a lot relocked in on the bearish side. I see much more downside to go at least uh, until 1160 area. Like I was warning uh, before, the momentum is down. We have a negative trend channel, negative swing VIX, negative momentum locked into this market. It's it's looking really bad. But like any other market. You don't know. So here's how I play it for Friday. For Friday, we're looking at if it's going to reverse from here, we have breakout at 1247.60 and continuation pattern short at 1235.90. Okay, our final chart is uh, silver. Uh, wrapping up today's video for Friday's trading, uh, November the uh, 22nd. Uh, silver is weaker than gold, like I've been warning about for the last two weeks. Understand that the ranges in here have been very narrow, very tight trading ranges, very almost non-existent momentum and volatility and volume. Uh, we are we've been locked in with this one though, you know, for the, for the last two three weeks, locked in downtrend bear market and negative swing VIX we have a, a, a negative swing VIX so downward momentum is picking up and we're headed toward that night that initial support of 1950 that I've been telling you about so for for Friday I would say basically you're just basically moving in, you're moving your stop as you know tight as you can. It's very difficult because of the ranges have been so so small. Uh, this one is basically if you're short, you're just holding it and trailing it with a stop. I don't have a new position to recommend on this one for Friday's trading. Um, 
it's pretty much it is what it is kind of thing. Um, basically, you're looking at uh, 1992 uh, is the support. If that's taken out, then that's triggering and adding to your position, basically, is what it boils down to. All right. Uh, if it gaps down on the open for Friday, then the um, the 1992 is going to be the reversal to the top side uh, to liquidate shorts and, and get long. All right. So that's all I have for today. Remember, take what you can, give nothing back, and have a great weekend.